Hi, this is Angel Jones. I love great conversations where life's journey is communicated not only through words, but tones and emotions. Explosive expressions that allow you to feel what they felt and learned. A fool learns only from his own mistake, while the wise learn from their own and from those others have made. Thanks for being here with us. Good morning, good morning, Dan Simon. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful morning? I'm doing great, Angel. Great to, great to speak with you. Hey, it's my pleasure. You know, I saw your picture, my friend, and I think, you know, I keep saying to, to, to the best that I've seen, hey, I think you have the best thus far. And one guy had a fish, right? A really, like a huge fish in his hand. Well, he does a fishing podcast, but I think you've won it right now. Um, you're sitting with what looks like a tiger um, right next to you. Uh, that was a real tiger, and that was a rather scary. That was in Thailand, in Chiang Mai. Wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. I, I'm sure people are going to be clicking when they see it, like, okay, let's listen to this conversation. <laughs> people do get interested in that. It's uh, It was an amazing experience. Yeah, I love your face, though, your fish. What is that in your hand, though? Uh with the tiger picture? Yes. I don't know. Did I, <laughs> did I have something in my hand? I have no idea. It seems as though you have something in your hand that looks like a rope or something that you're playing with. Uh, I don't have the picture in front of me, but it was probably the tiger's tail. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. So tell me, Dan, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? Uh, I would say intuition. Hmm, interesting. Who did you learn intuition from? Uh, I, I learned how to develop it from a friend of mine in Toronto, Michelle. Uh, but I would say more than that, it's a way of unlearning, uh, living in your brain and an an analysis all the time. I spent most of my l life analyzing and thinking and, fi and thinking I could figure everything out with my brain. And I've discovered, uh, later in my life that, uh, intuition using the power of feeling the power of, uh, trusting your gut is much more effective than trying to use your brain to figure everything out yesterday yesterday now tell me is it is it from a place of perfection you were doing that or was it just a place of comfort uh, from a place of perfection with regard to analyzing everything yes i think it's just what i learned okay. uh, it's it, it it was by nature an easy way. I always was an intelligent kid, and I always thought that you needed to figure everything out. Per, being perfect may be a part of it, but I, I think that the intuition part really requires uh, trust and not trying to be perfect and just allowing the universe to bring you things that uh, you can't necessarily create just on on your own. So it's really a different way of approaching things. And it's one that appeals to me, but it's not something that was natural or that I learned growing up for, uh, at all. Hmm. That's intriguing. You know, I've uh, like intuition uh, so far in these conversations, I think mostly women would have spoken about operating in instinctively, Oh, let me say they would have operated instinctively on in intuition or in intuition, either. Or. But um, hearing you saying that um, definitely speaks largely. Especially last night, I had a conversation with one guy, and he spoke about the perfection uh, model, where he always wanted to make make things perfect. And I think there's a connection to the intuitive individual as well. Um, pretty interesting. That is pretty intriguing. So, I mean, why, why, how did that, how did you decide that enough was enough? Well, I decided enough was enough on the last day of uh, 2010 when I was in New Zealand and I ended up jumping off uh, the Karoo River bungee jump, uh, the Karoo River Bridge. Uh, quite by, I had no plan to do that, but without getting into detail now, I, I took the leap, I jumped off the bridge, did something that I was terrified to do. And after I did that, uh, I just became exhilarated and, and over time discovered that, that if I could face that fear and jump off that bridge, I could stop kicking the can down the road and a lot of other things that I had been doing in my life. And I began to change 
pretty much everything in my life and, and reinvent myself. But it took a very terrifying experience to realize that the life I'd been living was really not for me. It was for somebody else, for what I'd learned from other people about who I should be and where I should go and what I should do and what I should acquire. And uh, that one experience that happened completely by accident that I knew I had to do, that really changed everything in terms of how uh, how I looked at my life. And that was almost um, uh, wow. six years ago. Did you need to... Um to continue doing those type things ever so often to remind yourself? That's an interesting question. Uh, I haven't done anything that scary since then, but I, I do have a, a firm belief that every time we, we face a fear, and every day we have something we're afraid of. Uh, somebody asked me a question the other day about facing something, and it just was a phone call. That I wasn't, that I didn't want to make, and I made it. But every time we face something that we're a little bit uncomfortable about, uh, I think we get bigger and we get stronger and we and we grow. So uh, the answer is you don't have to do those kinds of daredevil things, but you, I, I think it really helps you to face challenges and do things that are very uncomfortable if if you want to grow and uh, and get to a different spot in life. Love that. Love that. What is one thing you've done consistently over the past three years? I would say it's uh, being an explorer. Uh, I am constantly seeking. I'm, I'm an intuitive hunter and an intuitive creator. And I'm constantly seeking new experiences, both with people and with places. I, I've traveled to uh, almost 60 countries across the world. And in the last three years, I've probably been to uh, 20 or uh, 20 or 30 and that's always been a theme for me of not just getting stuck in the same place but finding new people new experiences connecting and again in today's technology it's so easy to connect to people all across yes. the world i really expanded my uh, uh, my reach in terms of um, in terms of who i can uh, touch and meet and i just enjoy the experience of meeting a new person and, and really that's really part of what i do but hearing people's stories I, uh, everybody's got a story and every, each story is unique and that's what i've done is explore uh other people's stories both professionally and just personally to to see what kind of experiences people are going through and it has always been amazing to me what kind of challenging experiences and what's affected people as they've gone through their life that if you'd look at them on from an outward basis you'd never know unless you really take time and explore it you'd really never know the kind of things people have gone through so that's always been very uh, interesting to me to find that out and to, and to understand other people and where they where they come from how does it make you feel uh really good really empathetic to understand where somebody else is coming from and really i guess i do it because it it helps me to understand myself better I, I, as again i said earlier a lot of life i went through just analyzing instead of feeling and the more you you understand where somebody else is coming from i think the more you can be empathetic with yourself as well which is really the which to me is really the bottom line how yeah. how, how can you treat yourself well uh, as well as other people, it kind of goes together. It does, it does. It's it's a lot like what's happening on these conversations. It seems as though you love great conversations as well, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Why would you suggest someone do what you've done? Um, I wouldn't say specifically jumping off the bridge, but um, you know, just just pushing, just pushing on fears and doing that one thing that that you fear well and i agree i i wouldn't suggest that anybody should or needs to do things the way i've done them in my life it's i've always done things a bit unconventionally when people look at it many people are curious or why would you do that i've actually been on a walkabout for the last four years and i've been living in a lot of different places and it's uh uh, you know, I've been stable for about a year, but I just enjoy continuing to move and to explore. So, you know, I would say that instead of copying what I do, I'd, I would say do what, uh, figure out what is most important for you and pursue that, uh, whatever that might be. But it looks different for everybody, right? I agree. I agree. Let's switch gears for a bit now, Dan. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm Caribbean water. What is your earliest childhood memory? I had a little trouble coming up with that, but I, I, I remember 
in uh, when I was four years old. I was in a uh, in a nursery school play, and I got kicked out of the play, or I lost the role, either because my singing wasn't good, or I couldn't remember lines. I don't recall. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what, uh, but. Uh, I remember that was a, uh, for my mother especially, was uh, uh, an upsetting experience. So that's that's the first thing that uh, came to mind for me. That is intriguing. That is in- Why do you think this memory is so clear? Uh, there was probably a lot of energy and emotion attached uh, to it in terms of, in terms of uh, other people's approval and, you know, what my mother thought uh, might have been embarrassing if I didn't get the role, and you know it's, it's such a small thing, but you know it really wasn't a small thing to her. And that uh, what's interesting is uh, things will will carry through from these influences from important people in your life. That if it's important to them, you're going to get that energy, even though it might not have been a big deal to you. Just the the specific thing might not have been a big deal. It turns into a big deal, and that mm. can have an effect on you for a long time. Mm. Love it. You know, it's intriguing, that thought picture that was created in my mind, I saw, if I can interpret it, I saw, hey, you know, had you been that person that you are now, where you've actually, where you've actually become stronger in your intuition, you would have probably said those lines, like, just made up something, right? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it would have been, it would have been different, but you know, those experiences we have, there's always a reason for them. And, and uh, the things that look like bad experiences really make you stronger and, and they give you an opportunity to learn things that you need to learn. I totally agree. And have you been learning, you know, and I'll tell you, you know, that it's a decision. You actually have the, the choice to not learn or to learn. And then after you've learned, then you have the choice to act or not act. And I'm glad that you've chosen to act. Thank you. You're welcome. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? You know, that was a, uh, when I was 12 was an unbelievable year for, uh, for songs. It was 1967 and there's a, it was hard to pick, but, uh, The Happening by The Supremes. All right, all right. <laughs> We've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. Yes or no? Dan, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, not formally, no. Are you married? I am not. I'm divorced after, I was divorced after 27 years, so not currently. Do you have children? I have two boys, 28 and 25. Wow. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I would actually say I have an outer circle of very eclectic friends, uh, and they're kind of in different pods, but versus just a, an inner circle, I'd say no. It's really, uh, it's it's a group of friends that uh, in some cases have no connection, sometimes do, but all over the world. Hmm. So I wouldn't call them necessarily an inner circle, no. Alter circle, like that. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, with the exception of... of uh, 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 sporting events, either golf or uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. If I have that, yes. But otherwise, it'd be an hour or so, hour and a half of news, possibly. Okay. And what about screen time? Do you spend much time on the computer or phone? Phone, no. Computer, uh, a lot, especially with the work I'm creating, the program I'm creating. So, uh, yeah, fair amount every day on the computer. Okay. And, I mean, just to, just to t- before you leave... Um, like what you're creating with your events, right? Which is, it's, a t- it's, it's, it, 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 oh, oh, that is what it is. <laughs> uh, it's a typo, not a tragedy. <laughs> Reframe your story for power, passion, and joy. Well, what, what, explain that to me, please. Well, I basically for quite a while have worked with women to help them to own their greatness and really to, to realize where their authentic power lies. So uh, I'm just in the process of finishing up uh, uh, the infrastructure for a live event called It's a Typo, Not a Tragedy, Reframe Your Story for Power, Passion, and Joy. And the idea is to help women to 
to take a look at the old decisions because we all have made old decisions and have old beliefs that we've inherited from the past. Tony Robbins says this, that we've, we've, we've made decisions early on in life that lots of times we're under a lot of stress and maybe unconsciously, but those decisions affect the way our relationships and the way our life works out. And if you can help people to update those decisions, to, to, to see the, what's not correct today, in that story that you that you learned a long time ago, you can make a new decision and then you can design a new dream for your life. So that's what I'm working on both online in terms of individual and group coaching programs, but in terms of a live event that I'll hold different places all around the world is my dream to, to have that where I can have the support of a group of women where they can support each other and help them to reframe their stories because it may be fairly easy to figure out which parts of the story are, are incorrect or not working for you because we all have parts of our life that, that are not working. But having the support to move forward to make that change in your life that allows you to actually ha live a different life instead of continuing to live in the past can be quite challenging. So I, I really enjoy helping, um, again, mostly w women in terms of having this different support level of experience to reframe their stories. It's a really a, a key to where I'm going through, uh, through the rest of my life, mm. uh, Angel. I love it, love it. Hope to see you in Trinidad soon, man. Dan Simon, thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you very much for having me, I enjoyed it. Amazing audience, before you leave, there's one person I'd like to introduce you to, Amanda Jones. She is my wife and her passion is to educate, encourage, and empower. Hi, I'm Amanda Jones and I'm a registered nurse. Do you or someone you know have diabetes? According to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2015 worldwide, 415 million people were living with diabetes. Just as that figure is overwhelming, so too can the effects of diabetes be. So, to help simplify diabetes for both adult and child, I've used rhymes in my books, The ABCs of Diabetes for Children and Poems for Patients, a focus on diabetes. At its simplest, rhymes help us to remember. If you, a child or friend, want an easy, reader-friendly way to know about diabetes, then get a copy of these books. For more details, you can go to poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.